It's here at last, the all-new Range Rover V8 diesel. The Brits are finally catching up. About time, as the market had a need for a decent diesel in these times of spiraling petrol prices, the previous BMW-equipped V6 model was ultimately outdated, pretty lame and far too loud. This engine delivers 54% more performance without fuel consumption increase, only 11.3 liters per 100 kilometers. Who's bothered by the fact that this car doesn't have the streamlined looks of a whippet? This 2.7-ton 4x4 still does 0 to 100 in a nippy 9.2 seconds. Our test model is called Vogue. It looks pretty much like its predecessor, it's imposing, it's there to impress, and it has a loyal customer base. Typical for Range Rover, the fair and square body, leaving wide areas open to attack. Dynamic Xenon cornering lights adapt to the change of direction when cornering. Twin turbos are behind the 272 horsepower at only 3.6 liters capacity. Practical and user-friendly, the two-piece tailgate, easy access to the 1,000 liter load space. The interior has also gone up a few notches, only the best will do. The central console seems less cluttered, an air conditioning system for perfect climate control, a multifunction steering wheel, also heated, lots of useful switches and electronic support at the push of a button. Too many buttons, maybe for some people. Light colors and an Oxford leather interior project sophistication. Luxurious, the combined DVD TV sat nav package. Unfortunately, you can no longer work the sat nav while driving. A clever idea, the Venture Cam, it's magnetic and can be fastened anywhere on the car. The image is transmitted to the monitor, making maneuvering in difficult terrain easier. And difficult terrain is where the Range Rover feels at home. At the push of a button, the electric terrain response system optimizes power distribution when driving cross-country. The program automatically activates level, hill descent and traction controls, adjusting transmission according to deep sand, rocks or grassy ground. In cross-country mode, the height-adjustable chassis offers ample suspension. There's no danger of the underbody touching the ground. The chassis provides permanent traction. Even cross-country beginners can cope with difficult situations like hill descents. The Volvo XC90, for example, is far more difficult to handle off-road. It doesn't have diff locks or gear speed reducers. The Swede performs much better on tarmac. For this kind of car, 11.1 .1 liters of fuel consumption per 100 kilometers seem reasonable. Only 185 horsepower generates sufficient drive and a top speed of 200 kilometers an hour. As fast as the Range Rover, but the body roll when cornering puts you off driving at fast speeds. The Mercedes 420 GL CDI is another serious rival for the Range Rover. Dominant on-road, the German sporty chassis. The British 4x4 is just too reserved for its own good. The brawny German loves to show off its powerful 306 horsepower and 700 newton meters of torque. Cross-country, of course, the Merck is no match for the Range Rover. The new model six-gear automatic transmission is smooth and reacts quickly even when used in manual mode. The torque gets the Land Rover going, but the turbo lag is pretty noticeable. Rather nice for cruising down quiet country lanes, though. Conclusion, sound effects and power go with the way it looks. Together with its impressive off-road capabilities, this latest Range Rover has seriously upped the stakes in the high-end SUV market.